You're watching Ruroni K95's anime review on his and her circumstances. Hi Ruronis, this is your pal Ruroni K95 here. Today's anime review, we got another anime review from the 90s. For today's anime review is His and Her Circumstances. Based on the manga Kare Kano, which is the Japanese translated name for the manga His and Her Circumstances by Masami Tsuda. His and Her Circumstances has only lasted about 26 episodes from October the 2nd, 1998 until March 23rd, 1999. Which is, this anime premiered in 1998, particularly around the same time as... Cowboy Bebop and Trigun, as well as Outlaw Star. Every other anime from the 90s, I guess, it, which is in general. Yeah. The series was licensed and pu was published in English by, in North America by Tokyo Pop uh, as well. The, the, chapter the chapters from the first seven volumes were adapted into a 26-episode anime television series by Gainax and JC Staff. It was directed by Hideaki Anno. The episodes were broadcast in Japan on TV Tokyo from October 1998 to March 1999. It is licensed for distribution outside of Japan by Enkoi Enoki Films under the title Tales at North Hills High. Yep. And also for sub-licensed for distribution in North America by Nozomi Entertainment was released it as his and her circumstances. Uh -huh. So let's review. Yukino Miyazawa is a Japanese high school first year student who has the envy of classmates for her good grades and immaculate appearance. However, her perfect exterior is a facated and egocentric charade. She maintains to win praise in pri the privacy of her own home. She is Boiled, stubborn, a slob, and studies relentlessly and obsessively to maintain her grades on entering high school. She is knocked from her position at the top of the class by Soichiro Ar Arima, who is a handsome young man whose existence Yukino considers a threat to the praise on which she thrives, and she vows to destroy him. When Soichiro confesses that he has a crush on her, Yukino rejects him and then boasts about it at home. Her observant little sister Kano points out that her rivalry with him comes from admiration, causing her to rethink her own feelings. So, but before she can figure out she hates or likes Soichiro, he visits her home and discovers her being self. He uses the information to blackmail her into doing his student council work. At first, Yukino accepts it, coming to realize that he is also not the perfect student. He pretends to be tired of being used. Yukino revolts and Soichiro apologizes and he admits that he still loves her and just wanted to spend time with her. Yukino realizes she loves him as well, and together they resolve to abandon their fake ways and be true to themselves, though she initially has trouble breaking her lifelong habit of pretending perfection and her competitive ways. So as the series progresses... Yukino is oh, able to open her true self to others and earns her first real friends beyond Soichiro. It eventually revealed that Soichiro was striving to be perfect in order to avoid turning bad like the parents who abandoned him. Falling in love with Yukino, he is able to become more true to himself. But he also finds himself becoming increasingly jealous of Yukino's change, bringing new friends and activities into her life. And of her having parts of her life that don't involve him. So when Yukino unknowingly hurts him, he becomes more jealous and afraid. And however... Er... Er... 
And it begins to wear her facade of the perfect boyfriend in an effort to protect her from his ugly self. The return of both of his parents into his life sends Soichiro into a dark area, but helps him finally break free to truly be himself. As Yukino and her friends help him learn to uh, learn, lean on and trust others. And also, in the end of the series, however, this shows Yukino and Soichiro in their 30s with their three children and gives updates on the various friends they made along the way. And that's how you end the series with Soichiro and Yukino in their 30s with their ch three children in the, in the final episode of um, His and Her Circumstance. Kari Kano was Masami Suda's first lengthy manga series, still new to professional manga writing in general. Shortly after starting the series, she had to put it on hold while fi she finished working out uh, the framework of the story at where she ultimately wanted it to go. In adapting the first seven volumes into the anime television series, director Hidaaki Anno kept the same general scenes and dialogue but modified the overall feel and focus of the series, making it into a personal case study of relationships. He emphasizes the dialogue over the animation using a variety of techniques including iconic scenes, production sketches, real-life location shots, repeated imagery, and even using animation versions of the manga panels, or simply writing the lines of the dialogue being spoken over static screens. Huh. Ano is credited as the director for the first 16 episodes and co-director with Hiroki Sato for later episodes, but with his name written as in Atakana. As Ano Hidaaki, possibly as the form of protest, Michael Johnson of Nausicaa.net reports having heard from Gainax staff member that Otto objected to the restrictions placed on television by TV Tokyo after the Pokemon seizure incident. In an interview, Hiroyuki Yamaga claimed that Gainax found it difficult to work with a series that is based on an original work stating. And he said... Kari Kana was supposed to be a romantic comedy, and we wanted to emphasize the comedy and not the romance. The author wanted to emphasize them both, and that is where the conflict came to be. We would like to continue to work on it, but we have upset the author, so it is very unlikely that there will all be a continuation of the series. I'm very so. I am very sorry. So for the anime, however, because this was, yeah, so for the manga, however, it only lasted about 21 volumes of the manga Kari Kano from February 1996 until April 2005, only about 21 volumes of the manga. Yeah, the 100 individual chapters referred to as acts were complied into... 21 to Ankobon volumes by Haku Ensha as well, because the first volume was released on June 5th, 1996, with the final volume released on August the 5th, 2005. Yeah. I guess. So for the anime adaptation... However, Kari Kano was adapted as an anime television series produced by Gainax, which is known for their work on anime such as Neon Genesis Evangelion, Royal Space Force, Gunbuster, Nadia, The Secret of Blue Water, FLCL, Magical Shopping Arcade, Abenobashi, and Gurren Lagan, as well as other anime in general, such as Madaka Box, Magica Wars, Wish Upon the Plades, Corpse Princess, Panty and Stocking, forgot to mention that, 
this ugly yet beautiful world. Because this anime was done by production and and company called Gainax, which is known for the work on Neon Genesis Evangelion, and a lot more other anime, including Gurren Lagann, especially when the anime His and Her Circumstance was created by the company that worked on Neon Genesis Evangelion, because it's just how it is what it is when it comes to anime. Yep. So for the anime His and Her Circumstance, however... Uh, or because this is your typical anime that came out in 1998. Because this was made. Because most of the time the art is good, but uh, experience on how you see in the budget techniques, especially the cutouts from the manga stills, white background characters, drag it all down. When you further go until the final episode, which it almost has no animation, with being replaced by manga panels and Gainax signature text instead of the art. And the acting is good in either the track, particularly for Yukino took a moment to get used to hearing Ash Ketchum as a leading girl in the English dub. English Arima could do with more energy. The music has many nice tracks such as the like the redemption of gliding dance of the maidens notably from um, Razafon when it was to be Neon Genesis Evangelion's original opening song but it's just how it is what it is the two so the story however the two perfect steward Udins turn out to be not so perfect but they fall in love as they discover each other blending humor and heart with realistic relationship development his and her circumstances would reach Greatness, if not for its incomplete nature and flood of recap episodes. Yeah. I mean, if you like anime with romance, I mean, you might as well want to ch check out, out His and Her Circumstance. Because this was based on the manga. What His and Her Circumstance was in, under the title as... Um, Kane Kana, Kare Kano, which... It's just how it is what it is. Yeah, because this was made by Gainax, which is known... Studio Gainax, which you... For, whatever you want to pronounce it. Yeah. There's also four CD soundtracks that have been released in Japan for the anime series by Star Child Label, for label of Japan's King Records. The first His and Her Circumstance, Act 1.0, contained 24 tracks, including musical scores by Ishiro Sagaisu... On it, who's known for the music and anime soundtracks such as Neon Genesis Evangelion. He won the Tokyo Anime Award for Best Music in 2020 and for Evangelion 2.0, You Cannot Advance. And he also did the music for other anime in general, such as Megazone 2.3 and Kimagre Orange Road. He also did the arrangement for the third opening theme song for Ron Mahath. He also did the music for Ushio and Tora, Macross 2, Ice City, Attacker U, Leda, The Fantastic Adventure of Yoko, Bleach, Garzi's Wing. He also did the music for Berserk Golden Age Arc movies, including the 2016 Berserk anime series. And he also did the music for Magi, The Labyrinth of Magic. Forgot to mention that one as well. So that's going to be it for my anime review on His and Her Circumstances. Thank you for watching, but before we go, here's my thoughts for His and Her Circumstance. I considered His and Her Circumstance anime to be the best outstanding romantic anime from 1998. If you ever loved watching 90s anime, especially the ones that came out in 1998 during the late 90s, I guess. Hope to subscribe for content. My anime pilot link in the description down below. You can share this video on your Twitter or Facebook. If you have a Twitter or Facebook account and all the social media, be sure to give this video a thumbs up by clicking on the like button on this video. Feel free to leave it in the comments in the comment section below in this video if you like. Be sure to subscribe to my channel, K 95 Feel free to hit the notifications if you're new to my channel. Keep it otaku for this anime review. And I got another anime review coming. Stay tuned for my next anime review because I got another 80s anime movie for tomorrow's anime review with The Dagger of Kamui. Stay tuned for my next anime review on The Dagger of Kamui because you won't want to miss another anime review.